So, welcome everybody to this talk, which is about, let's say, the first steps where we, would want, where we wanted to integrate EMF inquiry to Cyrus as a possible, let's say, at the first time, uh, query language. And uh, these are the first results we have achieved in the, in the couple, last couple of uh, months, OK? This work, again, is a cooperation between the inquiry labs uh, as a company and also the European University of Technology and Economics and our, our group, or the group we are originating from, which is called the Fault Tolerance Systems Research Group. My name is Akko Shorvat, and all those nice uh, people were also participating in doing this uh, joint work, okay? So, what are we going to talk about? First, some motivation and background, because I don't know how many of you are really familiar with inquiry, Cyrus, viewpoints, and the concepts like this. I really hope most of you are uh, well prepared with that, but maybe there, be, there might be some people who are not really familiar with this concept. Then I will talk about the interpreter-based integration, which is the, let's say, official way how Cyrus nowadays uh, support these kind of extensions. Then our own approach, which is a little bit more complicated one, and some conclusions for uh, where are we and where we would like to go. As you can see, you might have seen these friendly faces in, in many of our presentations. This is a new guy. I already told him to send a new picture, but that was the best. Most probably, you will never, never, ever be able to, to recognize him, okay? He is a master's student just finishing his, uh, his work and also is working at the company part-time, okay? I think you know this guy and all these guys are also uh, active participants and contributors for the... And this is me when I had some hair, so that I never changed this picture because I'm looking prettier in that one. So let's go. So the interaction uh, is quite simple. Usually the problem with model-driven development that we can have models extremely large, complicated, where usually some of the users wouldn't want to go into the details and would like to have only just a certain part of the model visualized for them in front of their let's say, uh, editor or anything like that. And the question is that, how can we do that? Is it possible to define some kind of viewpoint, let's say? I would like to filter out some information, or maybe I would like to transform, not only filter, but somehow a little bit more complex transformation to achieve some kind of visualization that is uh, uh, more descriptive for the user and hides under underlying complexity, OK? So the concept of viewpoints is already there. I think uh, a lot of tools are already supporting this. I know at least Cyrus is, and also the Papyrus guys are, are working in that direction. But what really is the question that it's really nice that I have my complex model. I really nice that I have my, I have my uh, viewpoints, views. But what I would really like to have that maintenance of these views are immediate, so whenever Yeah, it resetted for some reason. OK, so you would like to receive instantaneous feedback whenever somebody else changes your model, OK? Or some transformation is happening or whatsoever. So this is the, this is the, this is the problem we are trying to tackle and all the others are with the different uh, modeling environments are uh, doing. If you, if you were able to uh, attend to the presentation about AOL, Active Operations, which was presented by, uh, by the Papyrus guys, then that presentation was also some steps into this direction, how this can be done a gen with a generic framework and what are the possibilities there to provide uh, instantaneous synchronization, incremental synchronization between different, let's say, views or diagrams, OK? During the presentation, and it is important, during the presentation, I will use a case study, which is coming from the Concerto project, which is an Excel project. It was late before that it was called Artemis, but now it's an Excel project, OK? The idea there is with many of the uh, EU projects to provide a, yet another uh, tool, tool chain for developing safety, safety critical systems. It is based on the CHESS initiative, which is a Polarsys uh, contribution. 
So you can download the newest version from the Polarsys site, okay? Which is, let's say, a subset of the Eclipse project and so on. What is really important here that it's, uh, it's following the concept of UML-based, standard UML-based uh, modeling with a lot of profiles. They have more than 10 or 15 profiles altogether used for different concepts, okay? And they follow the idea, uh, let's say, defined or designed by Tulio, uh, 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 professor from, from Italy, Padova, which is about the concept of non-modifiable PSMs. So, in a certain sense, it is important for them to have views, let's say on the PSM level, high-level views of the models. And this sim simple example is about that we start from a simulating model, we somehow put this simulating model into Eclipse, into a concerto component model representation, which is UML plus, plus profiles. However, this might be a little bit too tricky to, to read in certain situations, so we would like to have some normal representation, okay? The first step how Simulink and Eclipse was integrated was discussed in the Massive uh, project, which is open source. You can check it right now if you are interested. Slides will be on SlideShare or on the web page, so it will be easy to, to get that. There was a presentation about this particular work at EclipseCon uh, North America. So this is the example that I will use in, this pres in, uh, in the presentation. Okay. As I mentioned, most of you, I suppose, really know well uh, Cyrus. Uh, for our respective, let's say, the most important features that uh, it is able to provide custom concrete syntax for visualization, which can be tables, graphs, uh, trees, and so on. I don't know how many of you are using the tree and table uh, option, but usually everybody likes the graph visualization. But uh, in larger projects, it's typical you would, ha you would like to have a lot of tables and uh, tree-like uh, structures because it follows some, um, let's say, containment hierarchy, the trees, and that is uh, easy, easy to navigate and understand what is really there. What, again, is a really important uh, thing in Cyrus, or what I really like about it, it's, it's interpreter-based, and also you can define interpreted expression, which means that these expressions are executed on the fly, and its results are also part of the overall result what will be visualized. It can be used in many, in many, many segments of the of the O design. One of one part is let's say defining where uh, the edges between the different nodes should go, and it can be defined in a let's say, dynamic interpreted language. MTL was the, let's say, the, I wouldn't say original, but MTL was one of the widely used languages and also OCL. But with uh, 3.0, AQL came in, XLO query language. And as far as I know, from 3.1, which, which just came out a few days ago, I think uh, 25th, 25th of this uh, October, something like that, a week ago, there is this new language, XLO query language, which provides you these capabilities and it provides better performance than, uh, than MTL, okay? So this is Cyrus. How many of you are familiar with EMF inquiry? Raise your hands. Oh, cool, good to hear, good to hear that. So this is our work, inquiry, which means incremental queries. So that's why we're really excited about that in Cyrus, you are able to integrate your own query technology. The idea here is that we have our own language, which is a gra declarative graph pattern-based uh, representation. So it does not really follow the OCL-like uh, specification. It's coming from a little bit different direction, which is closer to, let's say, prolog closes or data log closes. And what is really important about the technology itself under the hood, that it's incremental, which means that always up-to-date results without model travels all, which means that whenever a change happens in the model, uh, notifications are sent using, uh, by the EMF. These notifications are processed, and always the results are updated. So query results are updated in the modification time. And when you, let's say, execute the query in a normal way, as, you, as uh, usual people think about it, these results are already there and you just, you just have to read them, okay? Because the update, update cycle is within the mm, modification time, when you really modify the model, and if these modifications are uh, small ones, then 
Usually it means a really small few milliseconds of additional time and in an editor based environment this is, this is not uh, something uh, too heavy to, to, to accept. Okay? And what is also important here that it also tracks changes what is really happening. So from fixed points to fixed points, let's say, or from transition to transition, you can see what really changed in the query result set. And later on, this additional information will be really important because if I know what really changed in my queries, I know what I have to refresh on my visualization, which means I, don't, I might not have to refresh everything, just only a well-specified small part of the of the visualized graph, let's say, which can be done uh, in less time if everything supports uh, this kind of behavior. Okay, so this is our starting point. There is nothing too much to talk uh, say about the integration, how Sirius provides it, because there are true. Uh, extension points, these two extension points, and you simply have to implement uh, the interface what is there, and from that point on the interpreter, the Cyrus interpreter, will use your technology, which are uh, reached using the, these ex extension points uh, to execute all the queries that you would like to use, okay? So how does it look like? So I have my EMF model, Modifica uh, model changes are, are happening, okay? Which means change notifications are, are uh, sent to inquiry and the queries are always updated. So whenever we have Cyrus and the VSM uh, interpreter requires some information, it just reads, let's say, the query results. They are always fed back to the interpreter will really fast and then I suppose it's under the hood, the interpreter calls the renderer and then the UI is refreshed, okay? This is how, how the serious uh, official integration works, okay? Nothing's uh, uh, too complicated, well documented, thanks for that because uh, it's easy to do, easy to do the work. And with this, we were able to, to provide really fast uh, query results, but I will be talking about that a little bit later. Here, I will show you just a demo that the thing is working. We did the same query with MTL, AQL, and, and inquiry, and to be honest, with AQL, it was not so easy to do that because the documentation is, let's say, it's sparse, and uh, it was really good that you have this uh, additional query result evaluator or something like that, and with, with that it took a few days to, to figure out all the combinations, how it works. Okay, the pattern itself, what we are, or the query that we are executing here is a little bit more complicated, but I will tell you. We have two application types, and in both applications we have state machines, and within the state machine there are transitions, which have special commands, send signal and receive signal. And if these application types, they have instances, which instances are allocated to host instances, let's say execution nodes, which have the communicates uh, edge, then I would like to have a specific uh, edge between the application types, okay? So as you can see, it's not so easy to navigate through this whole bunch of uh, under the hood EMF objects in order to see that this relation really holds on, okay? So, let's get rolling. Let's see if things are working. Yeah, well, maybe it would be better to show you the outline, but yeah, we have the edges, okay? Trust me, it, it works like that. We have the uh, inquiry-based version. For some reason, the automatic layout is different at the first time when I open with the, with the uh, AQL version and the inquiry version. Don't know why. Okay. And also, we have the MTL version. Okay, It will result in the same information. And just again, for the more, for the more technical savvy guys, uh, 
Under the hood, these models are in the same result set. However, if you open the, the model in a, in a different uh, editor, it will be loaded to a different res uh, resource set, sorry, resource set. And for that reason, they don't know if changes are happening. So we, we created a custom command, which is able to, to get the resource set from the, from the editor. So if I make modifications, then those modifications are directly uh, triggering the different uh, uh, directly modifying the models under the serious visualization. And if I change them, then these will uh, kick in some refresh uh, operations, and then we will see the result. OK? So I have this uh, custom uh, delete uh, manipulation. I delete the state machine 0. OK? And as you can see, it's deleted, and all the edges are gone. Wow. Nothing special here. What is the interesting section is you can see here we have that particular, that particular uh, edge I was talking about between the application types. This one here is defined using the inquiry pattern, which is right here. OK? If you're familiar with inquiry, you can, you can uh, see that this one is a, a normal inquiry pattern, nothing special here. Here we have some additional information to see which one is the self, as it is an important context information for uh, Cyrus uh, queries, and also what should be the result if the pattern would have multiple, if the pattern would have uh, uh, this pattern, if the pattern would have multiple uh, parameters on its on its uh, signature. Okay. However, this information, the patterns themselves. Are right here, okay. I wouldn't, mm, yeah, it's maybe too big now, but trust me, they are here in order to be able to be readable. So at this moment, we were, we were not integrating our XX editor into, there is an integration that XX editor into that particular text box. So it's better to use it in a way that you have one particular pattern, which is the one which is called in your in your uh, interpreted expression, and all the other information is defined in a plain old uh, inquiry definition file, OK? And you can have those information, and this is works uh, as always, OK? So use the tooling, what we have for inquiry, and then at the end, this integration can be done with, a, let's say, a wrapping pattern, which, which helps you to, to solve the issues. And if you are familiar with uh, Cyrus, you can see that here the same query is uh, defined using MTL. Simple. Uh, but it, it took less time to do this. Yeah, I know the, sometimes we had to use tricky, tricky combinations because for some reason they were not working. I don't know why, okay, to be honest. And also here we have the AQL one. And as you can see, they are a little bit more readable, I think, than the empty ones. So they are really, really useful. So if you are if you are working with Cyrus, I think it's a good choice to 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 start with the AQL version as the default one. Okay. So this is how it works. You can download it. You can play with it. You can you can try it out. But the idea is there that now it is possible to add whenever place you would like to have a query. Just add this IQPL. You, you can download the plugin, which provides this additional information. We have some binding information that needs to be defined. And from that point on, inquiry is under the hood and uh, does all the, uh, all the required operations. So back to the presentation. We have the edge. As always, we are executing. Uh, we, ha we have done some uh, simple evaluation with this relatively complicated pattern, I know. In the abstract, we said that the 1 million model element size is feasible. So the large model contains a little more than 1 million, uh, 1.2 million e-references, a, a few thousand e-objects, and a few hundred thousand e-attributes. And what is really important here, again, what we are always uh, telling to everybody, that in which case, where inquiry is really good is the recalculations, OK? Because it's incremental. It caches all the information. And from that point on, after the first load, 
as you can see, which is larger than in case of AQL. Recalculations. I can see there is some, there is some over shear, okay? But, uh, but it's uh, around fi uh, 50 milliseconds, okay? Nothing comes for free, as always. You have to pay in memory because caching is uh, memory intensive stuff, okay? Small, medium, large models are there. If you would like to, you can also try them out without any, without any issues. However, I was really happy to see, as you can see, AQL does, in this complicated uh, uh, case, three, four times better than uh, MTL. To be honest, we do not know why this is happening, but uh, re-executing re the MTL took less time than the first time. Maybe some initialization is there or some uh, parsing technology. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know, but it's strange. Because for AQL, there is minimal difference, so it it's works out of the box. Okay? So this was the, this was the way how Sirius currently supports currently supports uh, extensions. And let's say what we would like to see in the future or a possible, or a possible way we, we can work into a direction where inquiry can be a little bit more heavily involved in the Cyrus framework. So <laughs> we have an EMF model and we have uh, Cyrus here. Model modification happens and what we would like to see to to have an, an, an updated view as fast as possible. So for this, we tried out uh, this architecture, which is a little bit different uh, than the previous one, which means that from the EMF model, which is the source, let's call it source, we create an in-memory derived model, which is a completely uh, valid EMF model, just dynamically created, OK? You don't serialize it or anything like that. And the technology behind it is live transformations, which are based on the event-driven virtual machine that we, we have developed. Again, uh, additional information about EVM can be found here. And if you have been uh, to EclipseCon Toulouse, I gave a talk about EVM. So this is how things are built on top of each other. Simulink integration, EVM, and now in the example, at least, all, the, all these three technologies are working together. So if a modification happens, again, notifications are sent to the live transformation engine based on EVM. Query results are updated really fast. And if the modifications are small, only the required modifications are executed. So again, the, not only the query uh, recalculation is incremental, but the transformation itself is incremental which means that changes happening here in the EMF model will be, uh, will be available in the derived model really fast. And what we have here is usually the derived model is directly a kind of one-to-one -one mapping, what I would like to see. So defining the O-design or O-design file for that particular derived model is usually a simple one-to-one -one mapping. I would like to have this on the graph, I would like to have this on the table, and so on. So nothing, nothing uh, sophisticated or complicated is there. Well, the trick here is that if I can do for one, I can do for more. There is no big deal. So I can have multiple, let's say, derived model, OK? And these are then fed into uh, Cyrus, and this is how they can be uh, visualized, OK? What uh, we would like, we wanted to demonstrate is that from here to here, we have the technology stack, and it scales well, and it's relatively fast, to be honest. Again, it has more memory just than only just the query execution, but it's incremental. In this part, we were, to be honest, we were not able to, to find out how to use a incremental refresh or partial re, uh, refresh in, in Cyrus. And as far as I know, there might have been something in previous versions, but in the 3.x 3, 3 version, there is nothing like that. You have refresh, and that's all. Hopefully, in the future, we might be able to come up with something here. A little bit more technical stuff. How does it work under the hood? OK. Uh, I will give you the, the, the small demo. So we have the simulating model here. Queries are updated, OK? So we have these query results, which are responsible for, let's say, the nodes. We have these uh, 
where we result, which are, which are uh, responsible for the edges, okay? Transformation kicks in. It creates uh, explicit traceability. Based on that, it creates the nodes, so I know which query result uh, represents which, which uh, node in the, derived, uh, in the derived model. And then, as I have the nodes in my derived model, let's say, I can create also the edges based on the traceability informations. And based on the traceability information and the matching, I, I know between which nodes I would really like to have the edges, OK? This is the basic concept. As I mentioned, if you're interested more about this technology, either check my presentation or slides about the particular EVM-based execution modes, because there are a lot of different ways you can implement this particular uh, transformation. What, what is really uh, important here? In summary, this is no magic. One-way incremental synchronization, OK? Why we believe it's, uh, it's a little bit add-on? Because arbitrary transformation can be defined. You don't really have some, uh, some limitations uh, on, on what kind of transformation you can define from your source to your derived model. Either it's you know, 1 to M, M to 1, or N to M-like transformations or mapping that you would like to define, OK? We have a predefined set of uh, transformation rules just to have some kind of tooling to help. So you don't really have to define or write the transformation rules themselves because there is a, a simple, let's say, configuration model which, it, where you can define what type of transformation rules you would like to have between what kind of elements and all, all the stuff under the hood is generated. So as a proof of concept, it can be tried out, OK? So this is what, what uh, is really under the hood. Again, the same, the same uh, figure in a little bit different concept than the other one. And this is the really important feature. What we are uh, trying to sell here is the query result deltas are uh, calculated. So whenever a change happens in the source model, I know what kind of changes I need to execute in the derived model. And this information, hopefully in the future, can be fed into Cyrus. So I will know what new uh, elements are, let's say, created, objects, nodes, what elements need to be deleted. Directly, I can point out, delete this one, this one, this one, and uh, update some of them, because attribute values changed, OK? And based due to the fact that I know uh, what uh, queries were uh, touched in a certain sense, or what query result sets uh, changed at the fixed point, so when this change, that might change another one, and so on. So really, at the fixed point, I know all the changes, what happened from the previous, let's say, uh, uh, transition end. And it means that it provides the capability or the possibility to to, to increment or refresh. And that is, in the long run, might be really useful, because if you have large uh, Cyrus uh, diagrams, or at least what is under the hood is really large, and your viewpoint is relatively small, something changes there, recalculating what should be on the, on the view might take more than a, a user would like to, to sit in front of his editor without able to do anything, which is around 100 to 100 milliseconds milliseconds, OK? Uh, it's not too much time, usually. And they say, oh, this is too slow, this is blah, 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 and so on, because they don't see the complexity what is really working under the hood. OK? Let's see some additional uh, presentations. Uh, sorry, uh, demo. The first one will be the family uh, representation, OK? I think if you have ever checked uh, Cyrus documentation, it's always about the family model, so we stick with that. And also, <laughs> I really hope the Papyrus guys will not uh, crucify me for that. But uh, within the project, we had to create, <laughs> we had to create the viewpoints. I wouldn't say had to, but we tried out to create viewpoints uh, for Papyrus uh, UML, UML models, which were defined in Papyrus. Because back then, I don't know why the, the complete integrated system was not really able to, to work properly with Papyrus. And we were stuck with an older versions. And there, there were some bugs. And we said, OK, let's try out with this technology. Because it will demonstrate that the concerto approach is even more generic. And you can use any kind of different technology for certain elements. 
but uh, that is also possible. So, let's see. Again, this might be a little bit too fast, okay, just to demonstrate that it works. All the code and everything is uh, on GitHub, so you can download, you can check it up to the uh, up to the level that you are familiar with these technologies. So the first time is like, uh, here we have a family, okay? Sorry for the uh, low resolution. This, uh, this, uh, this is a relatively large family, okay? And we have two kinds of relations, child and friend. And these are, let's say, families based on the child relation. And as far as I know, this is a, a friendship, friendship based uh, uh, relation. And as you can see, uh, the child relation is, a, let's say, one-to-one. -one. So if I have a child, then, then I have one. However, the friend relation, it, it must be uh, bidirectional. So this time, Adam, the guy who, could not, who, who, who was not visible on the picture, he really likes this uh, girl, Bettina. And if things are going well, Sorry, not child, not so, not not that good, but a little bit less, less uh, uh, complicated things are going. So Betty now acknowledges Adam as a, sorry, as a, oh, as a friend. Then yee -hee, it's updated again. Why is it important? Because you use two different uh, views. In this case, this is the base, the original, uh, the original Cyrus version of the O design. Here. When this model is created, under the hood, there is a specific uh, EMF model, which has these elements like, uh, like uh, family and relations between them. And all the technology, what I was telling, is, is working uh, under the hood. And in, uh, EVM is used to update the references. The query results are there. So it creates the trans, uh, these elements. So this is the base O design, if you are familiar with that. Okay. So this is what is responsible for, for showing the, the members, okay? Adam, Bettina, and the others. And uh, what is more important, and this is the, the new stuff, this is the O-Design which is responsible for this particular viewpoint, okay? And as you can see, there isn't too much things there. The only thing you have here is uh, in the advanced tab, there is a root expression which really runs at the first time. Sorry, that's I mentioned this is the hacked based uh, integration approach, the, the best you can use at the first time, which means that it, oh, there is a specific EMF file which is read that defines really the, the different transformation rules to be applied. It creates all the required elements, and from that point on, it feds that EMF model into into Cyrus, and that's why it is visualized like that, okay? And that particular EMF configuration file, uh, it looks like this, okay? It has element, element, element rules, wow, yeah? And it has reference rules, and it has some, some attributes you have, to, uh, you have to define. This is a configuration file, okay? okay? This is a simple configuration file, nothing special here, okay? And as I mentioned, this particular view, it has an EMF, it's a valid EMF model, and this is its uh, uh, eCore meta model file, okay? That's, that's the difference, that's the big difference right now. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think for, for now this is more than enough. And uh, you, you will have multiple examples using this technology on the web page. And as I mentioned, there is the UM, UML version, which is able just to demonstrate this particular model. No? Okay. This particular model, okay, it's coming from an EMF UML model, which is defined right here. Sorry, I cannot show you the, the, the UML diagram for this particular UML model. The problem is, uh, again, with the Concerto plugin, some, some serious uh, exceptions are, are happening, and for that reason, it's not able to make. It's a relatively complex UML model, if you will check it. And this particular view, it's Cyrus-based. It has also, again, under the hood, uh, EMF representation, a derived model. So 
Papyrus UML, a UML model in Papyrus can have a Cyrus based viewpoint visualization. Cool. Let's get back to this part. Again, we have executed some uh, measurements of how the thing is working. Here you have the model sizes, not as big as the other ones, but the relatively, let's say, relatively large ones at the first time. There, in this case, we have a lot of elements on the, on the, on the view itself, OK? And what we saw that the execution time is something like the transformation of the first time eats up, let's say, one third of the, the complete runtime. And all the two thirds segment is, is used by Cyrus to, to, to visualize these informations. Okay? Again, memory consumption is higher, three, three times as the three, four times as the normal model itself. Okay? It requires memory, not extreme amounts, but it requires. And in this example, we have 10 plus the derivation rules. Okay? So just to, just to be a little bit more com complicated than the other one. However, what again is really important recalculations, Ca transformation level recalculations, again, within 50 milliseconds, OK? And to be honest, we don't know why this happened, OK? Something, maybe a GC or something kicked in, I don't know. Uh, but refreshing is also around one second for the smaller models. But for the larger ones, it's one second. And it might be something that people don't want to wait for. You know, if you change something, you have to wait one second. It changes. Again, I made some modifications. Again, one second. So here, we are also looking forward to have this uh, possible future integration possibility to have, to have uh, incremental or partial refresh where we can tell you this, refresh these elements, please. Uh, we can also tell which one to delete, which one to modify, and so on. And from that point on, that particular time, I think, can go down to, to, to do this acceptable rate. OK? Conclusions? Well, inquiry did, did uh, as, uh, as was accepted. Recalculations were relatively fast. As I mentioned, it would be nice to have this, uh, uh, this additional refresh opportunity. And I was talking with Maxim from Obio, and he said that there might be some way to try out at least the first version. And if it goes well, who knows? 4.x would what would have. Uh, it was used in this concerto project, and it's really important. It's only uh, one way, but online synchronization. So I would always like to see the new results. Okay. Contributions uh, are welcome. GitHub repository is there with some documentations. Please provide your contributions. And uh, we will be really happy to work with Obeo on, on, on f further enhancement of this approach. OK? Thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any question, feel free to ask it right now, or I will be around. So I can show you more if you are interested. Thanks.